what is going on everybody welcome back to the wild podcast the words of wisdom podcast i am your host jeffrey zamore um, if you haven't done it yet make sure that you like subscribe and hit that alert button so you can stay up to date on all the latest new episodes but of course i have a special special guest um the guest that i have that's coming on right now he is one of my pastors he is a great example of that I look at when it comes to not only being a husband, being a pastor, but just Thank being you. such a great leader. He leads by example. He is full of wisdom and, and he's he's a great friend. He's a great friend and he's somebody that I do admire a lot. Um, especially you. when it comes to like in this season of my life where I'm preparing for ministry and just always looking for examples on how to be a great leader. But without further ado, I have Pastor Patrick Keller of Winners Church. Pastor Patrick, what's going on? Yo, what's going on, brother? Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for the the intro. I got to I gotta record that, and I got to have my kids hear that so they know what type of dad <laughs> they have. And also my wife, so she can know, listen, you know, you got a great husband here. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, it's a fact, man. I mean, when I when I look at you and anytime I see you at church, um, I just see how you lead by example. You know, you're, you're an amazing father. You're a Thank great you. husband, and it, it's it, these are you're an example that I feel like we need to see more because sometimes, especially like in the social media world, because everybody lives off of social media. Mm -hmm. When it comes, especially when it comes to church, I feel like the, it, people want to put this. What's the word I'm looking for? Like, there's no more church leaders anymore. Or there's a lack of rather. I don't say there's no more. There's a lack yeah. of church leaders or church leaders that lead by example. They're always looking yeah. to criticize and critique, which. I feel like it's sometimes it's unnecessary. Yeah. But yeah. if there was somebody that that I can look at and put as an example, it would be like yourself, Pastor Patch, I mean Pastor Patrick, Pastor Maurice, and some of our other church leaders that we have at Winners Church. And that's one of the reasons why I love our church so much because we lead by example, and you're one of the pillars um of that. And so, you know, thank you for taking the time to join on this thank episode you. on leadership God's way. But I do have a question for you before we get started. I always yeah, have a question yeah, yeah. I want to get started with. Wait, 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 asked, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One second. Make sure you got to see that. I got the wild pack podcast up. Yeah. See, look at that. Look at that. My man, my man, my man. Got to support, man. Got to support, man. You Appreciate know that, that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Appreciate that. Hit the that. follow Thank button. You. If you got an Android phone, I don't know how you do it, but with the iPhone, <laughs> you support, you know. Yeah. We, 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 we team iPhone podcast. over here. We team That's iPhone right, over right. here. <laughs> if you yeah, got an Android, you still got love. You still got some love, but. I'm gonna have to yeah. side eye you a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I do have a question for you uh, before we get started. Um, this is a question I've asked my previous guest this question, but yeah. if you could start your life over, mm -hmm. what are three things that you would do differently or that you would change in your life? Oh man, that's a great question. Uh, if I could start my life over. I would definitely, um, well, number one, I would be, I would be super athletic. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I've been working on the gym consistently for several years now. And I, I've learned that oh, I really like this. I, I wish I can be athletic. I mean, sometimes the way I eat and the way I think, I think I'm an athlete, you know? And mm -hmm. so that's one thing I would like, love to change. I, I would, if I could go back into the future, I tell myself, listen, pick a sport and be extremely good at it. You know, I just love working. I love, um, um, building the body so to speak um the second thing that i would do is that um i would definitely tell myself to be a constant learner remain mm. curious and always ask yourself always not ask yourself but always ask questions and never just settle for what you see or settle for the answer that you get but continue to probe continue to to, to dig deep and continue just to, to learn uh, i've learned that in life, many things uh, are, we just, the things that, that we, want, we want to achieve or we want to get, we just need to learn how to do it, learn that they exist. Even uh, there's some uh, professions out there that we know nothing about because we have not learned about them. We have not been exposed to them. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I would love to tell myself. Uh, now, even my children, I say, listen, if you want anything, make sure you learn about it. Make sure you expose yourself to it. Um, the last thing, if I could do it again, I would probably give my life to Christ early. I'll give my life okay. to Jesus way back, you know, maybe when I'm in like elementary school, because I look back at it now, like, man, yeah, ever since I gave my life to Christ, my life has been different. 
It's been, um, I'll give you one testimony just to show you how. When I was in high school, yeah. when I was in college, my grades were really low. They were like C's and D's. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what was happening in my life at that time. But the moment I gave my life to Jesus, I kid you not, I had this desire to read the New York Times and I had this desire to read the dictionary. And to whenever I see words inside the New York Times, I don't know, I, I created a notebook where I would write these words down and I would study these words. I would be on the dollar, mm. I remember mean, taking the dollar, I remember taking the dollar van and I have the notebook studying words that I learned from the New York Times. And then after that, when I got into, when I went back to college, dude, my grades went through the roof. I wow. was excelling in every class. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit. God was dealing with me about this particular thing. And I, I mean, for some people, when they give their life to Christ, they overcome uh, maybe an addiction, or maybe they fall in love, or maybe they learn how to forgive. I mean, everyone has a different story. But for me, my grades, my thinking improved drastically. So um, I, I, when I saw that, I said, yeah, I wish I would have given my life to Christ when I was younger. <laughs> I would have been so far ahead. But I, I thank God for that. But yeah, that's three things that I would I would change if I could do it again. That's good. That's that's good. That's actually when I first. So the reason why I asked that question, because I saw this question pop up. Yeah. Um, there was a game that I was playing, you know, one of those card games where like you could mm -hmm. ask friends and family. And I saw that question and I kept it. I took a screenshot of it because like, I'm going to keep this question because I feel like this is a question where it kind of makes us reflect and look and see yeah. like if there is anything that we would do differently. And I asked myself that same that same question. And giving my life to Christ at a much earlier age was one of the things that I said that I would do because I noticed that the moment when I rededicated my life to Christ and because I got saved back in 2010, I want to say it was, I think it was 2010, Church by the Glades. And, but I, you know, I got saved, I got baptized, all that, but I still wasn't really kind of like living the life for Christ. I kind of was just went about my business like i was a very much a baby christian and there was really no follow-up or anything and i'm not saying that's the fault of the church because it, it wasn't it was me just kind of just just doing me but the moment when i rededicate my life to christ i've seen such a drastic change and i've seen where i became more wise i became more disciplined more obedient um i really see my life just really just grow and yeah. then i number two that i stated would be Understanding financial literacy at a young age as well. Literacy. Yeah, because I feel like if I would understand it, I understand it now. But I feel like if I would understand like like the like stocks and, and yeah. just yeah. understanding how the power of money and how to make money grow at a much earlier age, the importance of credit, things that I know now, things I learned, you know, in my late twenties, I felt yeah. like if I would have learned it when I was in my teens, mm -hmm. I would have been much more better off. Well, I would have grown much more wealth. Let me just put it that way. Um, because yeah, now me yeah, and Joanna, yeah. we our, our main focus in the season is to really build our wealth and, and create gener generational wealth. And we we've made some really great investments on mm -hmm. that's gonna help set us up to get into that position. But I wish that if I would have what I know now, if I would have known when I was much younger, yeah. I would have been a much better position or would have grown much more wealth. Like I would have been a multi-major already by this point. Um, oh, awesome. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one was to be um, more of a reader because when I was more younger, yeah, but when I was younger, I didn't really care to read that much. Like I actually hate reading. So it wasn't my thing. Now yeah. I, I, I enjoy reading. I, I read quite often now. And the more you read, the more wise you become. And I noticed that the more that I've started to read more, the more yeah. my knowledge and even my imagination has has grown so much more. And so that's mm -hmm. something that I wish that I would have done when I was much earlier, because then it would yeah. open me up to read different books, like books on financial literacy, because I wanted to know that information. But you have to read it, not just go on YouTube and watch different YouTube, which is great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But there's something about reading versus just watching a video. Like it, I feel like correct. it sticks into your mind, um, mm -hmm. and you learn more, you grow more knowledge when you're actually reading versus just watching. That's very good. I, I like that, that um, you said that because it was uh, there was this guy, uh, one of these sound bites on Instagram is a real, and he made an interesting statement. He said that the reason why many CEOs, multimillionaires, and billionaires read 52 books a year 
is because from these books, and he said, he said um, in particular, uh, self-help books, he said from these self-help books, they get many ideas. And mm. when I saw that, I, I began to up my reading game. I said, yo, I'm gonna, I try to read 52 books a year. It's been real difficult. I, this year, my goal was to read a minimum of 24, a maximum of 52. And to do the 52 has been difficult, but that's one book a week, you know? Yeah, self-help yeah, books. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. That's a, a good thing because uh, it, it's shown people, the readers, uh, Bishop David Oyedepo once said, uh, every successful leader is a reader. So um, you can see that people who are leading in society, they are very big on self-education and reading and learning. And so that's a good goal. Now, do you, do you have a reading goal you set for yourself this year? Yeah. So I, I have this app called, I don't know if you heard of Goodreads. And what yeah, it does, it keeps, yeah. So what it does, it you plug in the books that you're reading, and, and it keeps track of the yeah. books. And you can set goals. So I have a goal. I think the goal is twenty five books, close to yours, about the same thing. Twenty five books that I have on, that I have one there, and then so that's my goal, you know. And I'm hoping that I can reach that goal because, like you said, it's like pretty much like a book or two a week or something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah. my goal is, but it's, is to just really just read, read more before I go to bed. Now I'm reading, and, and I'm looking to just not just obviously reading my Bible, but mm-hmm. just to read on just other books because I want to become. My goal is to be more wise in the yeah. things that I'm reading on, and just you know, in, in general. And I feel like, like you said, there's something about being a reader that shows that helps you grow to becoming a great leader. Which leads yes, into what yes, we're talking yes. about today, which is leadership in God's way. Um, mm-hmm. So my first question to you, Pastor Patrick, to kind of segue yeah. perfectly mm-hmm. into this conversation is um, what leadership skills that you find most useful? Uh, I'm going to go. Great leader? OK, that's a great question. I want to look at my life. Um, the leadership skills that I find to be um, extremely useful for me is one, number one, positive thinking. And the reason why I chose positive thinking because um, we live in a world or many of us are living where we face different obstacles, whether it's uh, the obstacle of disappointment, the obstacle of uh, discouragement, or Mm -hmm. just the different stresses of life that can pull you down or different burdens that can weigh you down. And And if you don't have a mindset of thinking positive, it'll be it's gonna be very hard to see the future. It's gonna be very hard to see things turn around. So I believe that is a skill that's extremely important. Another skill I believe is important is the skill of communication. I mean, we're here today because we're communicating, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, leaders, you find that Jesus was an amazing communicator, right? He, he, he told them what he was here for. He told them why he was here. He told them he was very clear on the instruction that, that they were to follow. And if you look at now today, the work that Jesus did is still being lived out up until today. Why? Because the way he communicated and whoever was listening, another skill is active listening. We have to, uh, uh, something that I'm learning that there is power to just listening, hearing what someone said and seeking to understand what they're saying. That's what the Bible says, um, be slow to, I mean, be quick to hear, but slow to speak. And there's something to that where we just, okay, you know what? I'm going to listen and I'm going to listen actively. So I believe those are three skills. And also when I just add this, I do understand that depending on where you're at in life, some skills are going to be more important than others. You know, you think about the pandemic during that time, a lot of people were thinking negative. A lot of people, because it was new to, for a lot of people. So yeah, positive thinking would have been perfect at that time. But at the yeah, same sure. time, um, being willing during the pandemic, a lot of people learned. A lot of people got their degrees. Online courses were, were became a big thing. Um, so, so I, I believe that uh, depending on the time that you're in, different skills are going to be needed. You know. So, but but for me, those three skills I've seen in my life, they are um, they are what's important to me. That's that's I, I I like that, and I like how you point about being a good listener because sometimes we see you know especially like in in, in the corporate world mm-hmm. and you know when you have people that you report to your directors yeah. your managers and you could express a concern or an issue or something that you feel that would help make your job easier but sometimes we'll say like it goes through deaf ears 
And it feels like yeah. even even we could see it in politics, you know, and I'm, this is not a political show by any means. I don't really have those type of conversations, <laughs> but the cry of the people. But sometimes it goes into deaf ears like it feels like sometimes our leaders or who we report to are not listening to us. Yes, yes. yes. And I, I feel like when that happens, you can see how it brings down the brings down the morale Yep. of the team because they feel like they're not being heard you're not listening to me and you know a part of being a great leader is to be able to listen to the concerns of your staff of of your team and that's one thing that i really do admire about you because you know we have off conversations um uh, i'm the yep. head usher of our church and so i report to pastor patrick and he'll contact me and he'll also take my suggestion he'll listen to some of the things that i would say or that i would suggest or he'll ask me for my opinions like hey jeff what do you think about this and he he does a great job listening and I feel like that makes it much more better. So when it comes to maybe if we have to make a change or need to add something, remove something, you know, whatever it is that can kind of help make sure that our church is running the way it needs to run. He listens to the voices and the opinions of those because he's not just like, okay, I'm the leader. You listen to me. And then that's it. He also actively listens. And, and that's something that I do appreciate that. So I'm glad that you actually mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, thank thank you so much for that comment as well. Yeah, and, and it's funny, and, and just as you're talking, I'm realizing that that's how if you're leading, that's how those who you're leading, that's how they're gonna thrive. Because you listen to them, you heard them, and you, and you gave them a you wanted you gave them a chance to speak and yeah. you gave them a chance to execute. And it's so funny, like you will find that that the people who are following you, whether it be whether it be your family or whoever, they're gonna grow. They could not, now they're they they're spoken, they're released an idea, they gave an idea mm -hmm. and they feel they was heard. And now that leader can now act upon that. Okay, great, this is what I heard. I understand what you're saying. And then it goes back and forth, it flows, and then you'll find that there's more execution being done and more delegation being done. So that is that is um that is I realize that is in talking to you now and talking to you now, having this interview is actually more important than I realize. We are active listener. That's a more great skill that we need to practice as leaders. Yeah. What do you feel or not? What do you feel? But what does like the Bible? Because I know we, we look at the Bible as our source of truth and to help guide yeah. us through every aspect of our life. And leadership is is one of them. Um, what do, what does the Bible say about leadership and what examples can you give? Well, the Bible says this, right? There's, there's a okay. the Bible says several things that I believe are going to be important for us to know. The Bible says a leader has to take the initiative. I mean, we take time to think about it. God took the lead and created us. Then he went and gave, he delegated the authority. He, he, uh, he gave an assignment to Adam and then Adam is now in charge of leadership. And then you see, based on what Adam and Eve does or do, that's how we are today. So the Bible is saying that if leaders do not get up and do any, if they don't do anything, nothing's going to get done. Even a story with David and Goliath. I love this story. You will find that Goliath taunted or Goliath threatened these the, the Israeli army for over 30 days. I think it was about 40 days, I think. I don't remember. I think it was 40 days. On the 40th day or the 41st day, David eventually comes in. He hears the threats of Goliath and he says, I'll fight him. But here's the thing we have to realize. If David or anybody did not fight Goliath, Goliath would have stayed there. So you'll find that taking the initiative is extremely important. And then nothing is done until someone says, I will do it first or I'll take the initiative. I love what Bill Johnson said. I was listening to him just yesterday. And um, he said that there are some things that are inside the heart of God. There are some things that heaven wants to do, but they cannot do until someone takes the lead. And God mm -hmm. himself will not do it himself. Basically, so so there are some expressions that God, or there's something that God wants to release, and we're never gonna see it until someone until someone takes the lead. So, you know, one of the things I believe the Bible is saying that we have to take the initiative. Sitting on the sidelines will get nothing done. It's when someone gets up, take the risk, start walking, start moving, that we're gonna see what we need to see. The second thing I believe the Bible is saying is that in order to be an effective leader, you have to serve. You cannot. Jesus came serving. And it's funny, you'll find that through humility, through serving, through love, Jesus defeated the enemy. You know, if you think about it, Jeff, Jesus could have came and said, listen, Satan, I'm here. I'm going to slice and dice. I'm killing everything. 
and I'm gonna take who I need to take, and that's it. We we're gonna I'm gonna conquer the world that way. But he didn't do mm-hmm. that. He conquered the world through serving. He conquered the world through love. So he is showing us that in order to be a, an effective leader, you're going to have to serve. You're gonna have to put down what you desire. You're gonna have to put down what you want. And you're gonna have to begin to pick up a cause greater than yourself. And you find that all throughout the Bible from Joseph. I mean, Joseph goes through this hardship all for the sake of preserving Egypt and preserving the nations around him at that time, and in particular his family. So you'll mm-hmm. find that uh, uh, Esther had to put down, okay, Esther, I know you're a queen now, but put that down for a moment, go talk to your husband and try to help the Jews who are about to be killed, who are about to be uh, experience genocide. Uh, you'll find all throughout the Bible that people had to serve in order to get work done. So I believe the Bible is, 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 is emphasizing, especially in today's day, especially what we're seeing today, like nobody wants to serve. <laughs> There's some people like, That's it's true. all about me. I'm here to get what I need to get. I understand that. Some people have waited so long that now they're just putting everything to me. I want to focus on me. But God is saying that um, while you can focus on you, you have leadership is about serving. So I believe that that's another, I mean, the Bible's saying a lot, but when I, when I think about it, I, I believe this is something God wants to emphasize in this season and this time, that leadership is about taking the initiative. Leadership is about serving. And another thing, uh, the last thing I want to say is that the Bible also saying that be careful how you lead because leadership is meant to cause people to follow you. So whatever you do, they're going to follow. So therefore, you have to you have to be diligent and you have to be zealous or you have to be extreme about how you live because you know that mm-hmm. how I'm living, people are looking at me and whatever I do. They're gonna do. I've I seen it with my kids. My kids, there are things I've never told my kids to do, but they're acting out because they've seen their father do it. And I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. this is amazing. So I, I'm, I'm just, I'm seeing this. I'm, there are things I'm seeing my wife does. I'm like, oh wow, they're, they're doing these things because this is how I do it. They're talking yeah. that way because this is how I talk. So that's something that people have to understand that whatever you do, they're going to follow. And if they're gonna follow that, don't be surprised by that. So that's another thing I believe the Bible, that's why the Bible, I believe, shows us the importance of walking with um, integrity, walking in righteousness, walking in such a way that people can look up to you and follow your example. So I believe uh, that's another thing that the Bible is uh, expressing about leadership. That's such a good point, because it makes me think about me as a father, as as myself, and thinking like the examples that I'm leading. and. Seeing yeah. how my daughter, she's going to look at me as like, okay, how is my dad living? Because kids pick That's up right. their parents' habits, just like what you're stating, right? And if I'm yeah. being a poor leader in my household, being a poor uh, dad to my dad, I mean to my dad, to mm-hmm. my daughter, she's going to yeah. pick up on those things. And now she's going to create these bad habits or she's going to have a, maybe not a respect for leadership. He's like, I don't respect my dad. So because he's not a great leader, he does not show up, you know, this this narrative comes into her. And I'm, that's not hard now, obviously. But what I'm saying, if I was so now when it comes to leadership, if she can't respect her father or her parental figure or like, let's say her mom, for an example, as well, she's going to have an issue respecting leaders as far as like when she gets into the you know corporate America, she's not going to respect her boss. She's not going to respect the manager. Anybody that I know who has daddy issues or has mommy issues that has issues with their parents a lack of respect for their yeah. parents 99 mm-hmm. percent of the ones that i know at least i'm speaking for myself they have an issue with leadership that's correct they talk that's back to leadership they're very mm-hmm. rebellious when it comes to leadership and it even reflects on how they view god they are rebels even towards god because like hey i don't respect my earthly father so it's going to be hard for me to respect leadership and even probably the God that I serve. So that that that's yeah. such I, I never thought about that until you pointed that out. That is such a yeah. good point. Yeah let me now let me ask you a question, right? And yeah. speaking about leaders setting the example, how many times you were doing something and in a, a flash your dad came before you or maybe another leader that you look up they 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 flash before your mind and you then acted out based on what you saw like just like let's just say hypothetically okay um my dad always prayed this way 
And he mm-hmm. never told me this, but this is what I always saw. So now when I'm getting ready to pray, I, I saw my dad do it this way. Well, I'm just going to do it the way my dad did it. That's a, a, another example, a prime example of I'm actually doing what I'm seeing my leader do. And you, you yeah. take time to really think about it. You, you, you'll be surprised how many things you're doing because you saw someone else do it. That is so that's true. How- yeah, that's good. That's good. Like my dad, there was one time and me and Joanna, we were, we had like a, a slight disagreement. And mm-hmm. my dad, he, I, I, I saw my dad in myself. Like, it's kind of like you said, like, it's like a flash almost. And I mm-hmm. saw mm-hmm. my dad, because my dad, he has, love my dad, shout out to my pops. He's, he's uh, an amazing role model. I love my dad and the sacrifice that he's done. Mm-hmm. But my dad's temperament is different. Yeah. <laughs> it's different. And I've I've saw that at one this this particular disagreement that me and Joanna had, and I saw my dad's temperament come out of me. It flashed. And yeah. and, and I saw it, but I still was <laughs> acting out on it. And it yeah. wasn't until like after I had to kind of get out what I need to get out, because that's how my dad is yeah. gonna keep going. It's like I realized I was like, oh shoot. I was just like, I was acting like my dad at this moment. There you and, go. He, he yeah, never told you to do that, right? Did he ever tell you? He never down? told me. Never. Yeah. Never. 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 He's never told yeah. me to do that. It's just something that I end up picking up because that's the example that was set. Yeah. 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 So that 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 we that's I think that is something we have. Like you know, if we really wanted, I just say, if we really want to lead, if we want, if we wanted to lead something for the next generation. That was good. That's going to help them and carry them to, to the next and to the next. We say, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I can to set a good example so that these guys can be set up the right way. And then it goes back yeah. to that goes back to serving because now, you know what? I'm not going to be out there drinking and acting crazy because I don't want them to follow that example. I'm not going to yeah. go out there doing, I'm not going to uh, not develop. Like there's, there's some some leaders, they may not be, they, they may not work on their leadership skills. I don't need to read anything. Right. But now they're looking at you, they're learning that example and they're following that and they're going to carry that. We say, you know what, I'm going to learn as much as I can so they can see what I'm doing and they can follow that same example. You see, so that example, I'm setting the example and serving is extremely important in the topic of leadership. It, it is. And my to go back to my dad, he's such a he is he's a great leader and mm-hmm. I've learned to serve because of my father. That's good. Because That's he good. is a man who serves. He's a man. He'll go out his way. He takes the initiative. He does what he needs to do. He will. He he loves to serve others without yeah, a question, yeah, yeah, without yeah. a problem. My mom is, is very much the same way too, but that mm-hmm. is a habit that not only myself, but my brother and my sister also picked up without being taught that it was just something that was just, just it was just common. You just saw your dad doing it. Just, it. just saw my it. dad doing it. So for yeah, me, it's like yeah. there's nothing beneath me to to serve. My dad will whatever he has to do. He's gonna go ahead and do it. You know, That's because powerful. for him, he's looking That's like powerful. I need to do this to serve my family or to serve, you know, people around. Whatever it is, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So we've all have basically um, inherited that mm-hmm. habit of just like wanting to always serve other people. That's powerful. That's good, man. That's very. That's another good example. That's another, yeah. he, he said. He said. He said a good example for you guys. You, you, yeah. you ever thank them for? It? You say, Dad. You know what? Thank you for the way you live. You know, I, I appreciate. I learned some things from you, basically based on how you live. Did you ever like tell them that? I want to say yes, but if I haven't, Dad, if you're listening, you're watching. <laughs> thank you, and I'm gonna verbally, even or physically, say that to you because he yeah. is such a great role model. He's a great leader, and I really mm-hmm. admire my dad. Um, I really admire my dad for being a, a great example for me. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I like that. I like that. Yeah. If you, if you could spend one day mm-hmm. with any character in the Bible besides Jesus, because Jesus is always going to be the common answer because he's perfect. Of course. But if, you, yeah. but if you could spend one day with any character in the Bible besides Jesus to learn leadership skills from, who would you, who would you choose? King David all day. King David. King David. Yeah, pause, pause, by the way. No, or no Diddy. <laughs> no Diddy. <laughs> um, no, King, no, seriously, um, King David. Uh, uh, when you study the life of David, I mean, he, in, he embodied leadership. He really did. Yeah. When you, from the time he sees uh, a young teen, he's taking care of his father's sheep. So as a leader, he's teaching you 
the importance of being loyal and being faithful to the assignment that's been given over to you. Mm-hmm. He didn't, he took it seriously. You can see when he took, when he reads his resume to Saul, he's like, I'm a killer. I protected my, my father's sheep. Yeah. And he, I just love that. But then also, in addition to that, you see David, one of the po- most powerful lessons I learned about leadership this year is the ability to take control of the atmosphere to take mm. control of the room, to take to captivate the audience or to control the audience, not in a bad way, but in a good way. And what I mean by that is that is that um, you find David, he comes to this place where there's a war going on and evidently there was some stagnation happening on Israel's side. Goliath is placing threats. Goliath is setting the terms. If you study very carefully, Goliath is the one that set the terms to the war. You fight That's me. True. You see that? So Goliath is taking the lead, and the, the Israeli army is not doing much. All this, they, they they finally get to a point where Saul has to create a reward. Like, listen, if anybody fights him, they win. This is a reward. And you yeah. find David comes and he says something very powerful to Saul: "Let no man's heart fail because of him. I will go and fight the Philistine." He took control of the atmosphere. Then look what. Then you find this is what Saul did. Saul went from saying, you can't fight him, you're young, to may the Lord be with you. Yeah, So that's true. David's actions or David's ability to take the initiative and lead, he took control of the atmosphere. It went from you can't to atmosphere of faith. And it's fine. You, you, you could imagine all the, the army is there and they're like, look at this 16-year-old boy. He's marching to fight this, uh, not 16, I think he was probably 20. I'm not sure the exact age. But he's a, he's definitely a young a young boy a young man, and you can I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm assuming that these guys were like they began to muster up some courage a little bit. But then after mm-hmm. that, David won. Israel goes crazy and they pursue their enemies, and that's what leaders do. Leaders they take control of the atmosphere, and I learned that from David. And yeah, and there's many other things. When you see David, David he sought the face of God. Uh, David did so much. I mean, he went and turned 400 men into his mighty men yeah 400 they were these guys if you look at the every, the bible says everyone who was in distress everyone who owed who owed debt everyone who had issues with the current administration they all fled to david so these are mm-hmm. guys who at this point they're like really nobody they're like they just they have nothing they have nothing to do we're gonna go serve david they go with david and david takes charge and that's one thing for, for david to do that to turn these men from insignificant to significance where the Bible actually writes out David's mighty men. And these are men who started out with him when he was when he wasn't a king. It showed you the potential of David's leadership. I mean, there's so much we can learn from David. And uh, uh, we, we also learn from David's life. We also learned that if you would just take the lead, chances are you're going to bring the change that needs to be changed. If you would yeah. just take the lead, chances are you're going to win and you're going to be successful at it. David took a he just went out there i mean i don't i don't we don't see it we don't see him going back and forth we just see him being upset who this guy why is he talking that way All right, i'm gonna take care of this yeah, yeah we learned yeah. that okay if we would do the same thing for our lives and for whatever god has given to us we will see the results that we're looking for yeah. so david david's my guy i i I, yeah. I agree with that one of the things i really loved about david is that especially early on when he was on a run with Saul, when Saul was mm-hmm. trying to take him out, and he had there was multiple occasions where David could have he had Saul right there. That's right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, his soldiers they were like, Hey, Saul's right there. Yo, I could take this spear and just jab him to the mm-hmm. ground. And David said, mm-hmm. No, we're not doing that. David told mm-hmm. us, like, mm-hmm. we're not gonna, we're not basically we're not gonna be the ones responsible for killing. Saw the man who God appointed as king. He was also mm-hmm. obedient, mm-hmm. and it ref- and that also reflected on his soldiers. They saw this great leader yeah. where he could have easily took advantage of, like, let's take him out now. But yeah. David, yeah. he was not only such a great leader, but he was also obedient to God. That though there's a man who's out to kill him for no yeah. reason at all, except just jealousy and envy, he said, mm-hmm. "No, I'm. We're 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 not doing that." We're not going to do that because this is a man who God appointed as king. And mm-hmm. so we're not, we're just going to maybe scare him a little bit. Let him know, like, yo, I was here, could have had you, 
but I'm not. I don't have a wicked heart just like you. Wow, and, that's great. And I'm still. Oh, I'm. St- I, I still serve you as the king of Israel. And to me, I yeah. thought that was such something that I, I feel like people sometimes overlook a little bit when it comes to leadership. Yeah. Is that yeah. you don't react off emotion. You react off of logic. Because it could have been an emotional response for me to take him out, and that would have been the end of. And of Saul, and of, I don't have to worry about no more. I can go back to Israel and become the king that I've been out that was supposed to be appointed to. But he didn't yeah. do that. He stuck to being obedient and constantly following God. And I, and I think that's the reason why God said he's a man after my own heart. I really admire that yeah. about David. Yeah, that, that's very good. It's funny. And bring that story out. Do you think David, do you, it doesn't show it, but do you think he went through that moment of, yo, I can just kill this guy right now? And his emotions began to pull on him. And do you think also that, I mean, it doesn't record it, but maybe like, oh, like people probably gave him a push. Listen, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Like, like, do you think David went through that? Because if he did, then that means the statement you made, he exercised great emotional control. He exercised, he mastered his emotions over mm-hmm. what's the natural thing to do. He said, I'm not going to do it. Do you, so I, do you think David went struggled with like uh, going back and forth? I, I I think so. I, I I would like to think so. Like you said, it's not mm-hmm. recorded, so we don't fully really know. But I would think, mm-hmm. I would think that he he cause he showed great restraint because just imagine being you're being hunted down exactly by a man who you were you know David was his armor bearer, so it's like you're being hunted down for no reason. You're best friends with his son. Um, I think he was married to his his daughter right was it Macau or i think that was yeah, her yeah. <laughs> so it's like you 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 coming after me and for whatever reason mm-hmm. and here's this opportunity it's like just imagine yeah. god throwing this spear at you just out of wrath for no reason and it's like yeah. okay this guy's really trying to take me out i would like to think that he had to hold on to great restraint to not take him out because then all his worries and fears would have been gone at that moment as yeah. far as with that cuz Dave was on a run for how long? For what? Good twenty years, or I don't remember how. Maybe less than that. I don't remember how long. I, I don't. I don't remember either. Um, that's a good question. I, I would like to find out. But uh, he was he was on a run for a while. But to add to what you're saying, and also David knew this is a guy I'm going to be replacing. Yeah. So he could like I could take him out now, and then that's it. But this I think a, also. T- mm-hmm, oh, go ahead, go ahead, pass. Go, go ahead. I, I was going to say I think. This because he to your point where he was saying that this is the guy that I'm going to be replacing. Yeah. Um, he knows that okay, God appointed me to be the next king. So you know what? I'm gonna let God do the work. This is it's this is not if if I overstep this, then I'm being disobedient to God now. I'm basically well, well, doing what God said he's going to. That's that's what I feel. And so I mm-hmm. feel like that also played a role into it and let him yeah. fall to the hands of the Philistines. Um, and, and or whoever that's going to basically take him, which saw so end up killing himself anyways. Um, but that that's that's what I feel w- 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 with that. That that probably played a role in it as well. That's crazy, man. Because just imagine you're on the run, you're living, uh-huh. you're living out there, man, like a, a nomad. Yo, that guy's in my house. Did the Lord said that belongs yeah. to me? You know what? I'm gonna yeah. speed up the process gonna kill him yeah. and all his guys and we're gonna take over you know god's fine yeah. with it he already said i can do it david really had yeah. a choice to kill him and that because because uh, i don't we don't see where i guess david had the revelation not to touch god's anointed you know yeah but the reality is if you if, if so if, if you and saul are face to face and he's trying to cut you you're gonna have to kill him no so just say you yeah. know what david can be like let me just kill this guy because the reality is if he wakes up and sees me here i'm a dead man you know, I'm going to take fact. matters into my own hand. That's a, that's a, I never studied that. I mean, I never take time to really meditate on that, but you're so, that's, there's so much to that story that we learn about leadership, you there, know? There, there, there is. Cause they, it wasn't like David was like weak. He was no, he a was warrior. Not. That's correct. He was a, that's he correct. was a warrior. So, and he was a phenomenal leader. Like he, I think they were chanting because they had like the song where yeah. Saul uh-huh. killed like thousands, but David killed like twenty thousands or hundreds of thousands 10, and everything. Yeah, that 10, 000, obviously, yeah. that act obviously made Saul even more angry. Yeah, it made yeah, him even yeah, more yeah, angry yeah. And, and 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 that jealousy. So it wasn't like David didn't have the capability. He clearly could have. Because if it was yeah. me, I'm thinking now. I'm thinking if I was in that position, somebody was out to kill me. 
I'm going to be like, all right, I have the opportunity to take that person out. I, I would probably take that person out if I want to yeah, be quite and, honest, and, right? And, and, but in addition, you got to, you have to throw this in there. You know that this person who's trying to kill you, you have the mm-hmm. opportunity to take him out. That's the guy you're going to replace. I just say the CEO of, uh, of the, the, the biggest company right now is micro, micro strategy or NVIDIA. The yeah. guy says, Jeff, you're going to replace the guy from NVIDIA. NVIDIA finds out he wants to take you out. You know what? I'm going to speed this up. Me and, me and Joanna are going to be billionaires real soon. I'm going to take nice. him out. And, you know, just no, because you have to, we take time to consider that yeah. David was replacing the guy who, who he now has in front of him. And he had to drop on, as we call it, right? He got to drop on him. He got to he drop on take him. him up. Yeah, you know, but it just, uh, it, I never, I, just talking to you now, I'm like, wow, this is, this is, you're right. This is something that needs to be, meditated on really thought about because david did a phenomenal job not taking him out when he had the chance to with all the temptations surrounding him you know yeah yeah i, yeah. I agree i agree I, I never really thought about it until we just had this started having this conversation i was like hmm, kind of just dawned to me yeah because like you yeah. said it's like he had the drop point he could have easily took him out but that shows great leadership and it shows great obedience mm-hmm. um for him to like hey you know what we're not doing this and make sure that his um his soldiers follow suit with that because they be like man david's bugging yo let's just do it you know we out here in the wilderness you know with david yeah. man and it's like nah man let's just take this dude out because we know yeah. how like that's how it goes nowadays you know if there's beef yeah. between two gangs rival gangs it's like man if he's not going to do it i'm going to go ahead and do it now, do you think god was testing him because in addition to that the bible says that a deep sleep from the lord was on Saul and his men. So I'm assuming yeah. he probably would have killed them and he could have gotten away with it. They would have woke up, oh snap, the king is dead. What happened? Who came in? They, 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 they might, they, I don't know. They Maybe they would not have known about it, but a deep sleep. So a deep sleep comes from God and a, a, gold, a gift has been given to me. Am I not supposed to take it? So yeah. do you think God was testing them? So, and it's good because it's possible that even as a leader, God is testing you to see what you're gonna do in your leadership? I think so. I, th- I think, I think so? he was testing. Him. Yeah, because why would he put Saul in this deep sleep? Maybe he was giving like to him that, too. Maybe yeah, like, maybe he was giving to him. You know, here's, here's, hey, here's, ahead, here's, oppo- here's opportunity right here. Like I put him in a deep sleep because it wasn't. He did it for a reason, and he had the opportunity. I, I, I think God was testing him just to see, like, yeah. if he's really going to just take advantage of the situation, or he's just going to be submissive and be obedient and like you know what i got this revelation from god like you said that he probably received that yeah, he's the yeah, anointed yeah. king he's the appointed mm-hmm. king and mm-hmm. you're not to touch him even if he's coming after you i am protecting you as you can see i protected mm-hmm. you this far i'm going to continue to protect you you're going to be the next king of israel there's no need for you to take matters into your own hands i will take care of this i like what you said because we learned another lesson is that that when it comes to leadership, there are some leadership positions in particular, they have to be appointed by God the Father. You yourself, yeah. no matter how hard you work, no matter how many skills you develop and how many coaches and mentors you have, you're not going to get that position unless God himself ordains it or give it to you. And David's a great example of that. David understood, you know what? I'm not going to do it. Number one, God called me and my time is coming. Yeah. He, he said these words. He said, the last time he was going to kill him, he said, he said, either Saul's gonna fall by the hand of his own enemies or some some worse thing is gonna come upon him, but it won't be yeah. by my hands. He yeah. said those words. So that's amazing. As a leader, you have to now also trust the Lord to promote you and exalt you when it comes to positions and authority. You know, so yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I want to be clear because I know I, I want people hearing it and they're thinking, oh well, God didn't call me. No, no, there's some things you take the initiative. There's some things it has to be by calling or or by um, God's divine will. That's good. That's that's a yeah. really good point. I, I, I yes, that's a really good point. Really, really, really good point. I I, I like that. As a um, a, a, as a leader, because you're mm-hmm. one of the leaders of our church, but you're also a leader at home. We we touched on this a little bit as you being a leader at home, being an example for mm-hmm. your kids. How how do you balance being a leader at home? And also within your marriage, because it's one thing you're leading your your kids, but you're also leading your wife as well. And, you know, shout out to Pastor Fabian. She is phenomenal. But I love 
the dynamics between the relationship that you and Pastor Patrick has and how Pastor Fabian, she is um, strong in her own right, but she's also submissive to her husband as well. But you leave that by also by example. How do you balance that? But, uh, that's a good question. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say this. Um, so I was, um, I learned this awesome secret from Joshua 1 8. You meditate on the word, it's going to affect how you think, it's going to affect your behavior. So um, after getting this revelation, there's a lot, there's a lot more to it, but I don't want to take too much, I don't want to go into it too much of that. But mm-hmm. I learned, I said, wow, so if the word of God is able to change the way I think and live, I haven't really been meditating on his word enough. So I'm going to meditate on it. And I began to look at uh, Ephesians chapter five. And it said, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. I'm um, Jeff. I meditated and meditated and it dawned on me that you are a husband to your wife and you're not her counselor, neither are you her coach. You are there to love her. And since you're there to love her as a leader, your leadership now is going to be a little bit different towards her. It's not going to be the same as you're dealing with someone in the church or someone in the street, even your kids. Like the way you talk to your kids, you're not going to, the way you lead your kids, you're not going to lead your wife the same way. Mm-hmm. So how I balance it is is knowing when I when I'm when I'm a husband I'm a hu- leader as a husband when I'm a parent lead as a parent you have to understand you have to be clear you anybody who's uh, who's a husband you have to know exactly what your position is and what part you are to play you got to be uh, it just uh, for example let's just say um, I call my son he says what. And I say, hey, you're not supposed to say what, but say yes. I call mm-hmm. my wife. She says what? I'm not gonna go and correct my wife the same way I'm, I'm gonna correct my son. I may tell my wife, hey, honey, what's wrong? You what, you said what? Why'd you say what to me? I, I yeah. thought that was kind of rude. Something bothering you? Something going on? You know. So you just, I, I believe, in in order to balance it out, uh, and then also I've learned this too. You can't take home the baggages from work or from church. You can't bring that home. You you have to, the home, the church, work, they're completely separated. Yeah. If you see them as all the same, you're gonna make a, a terrible mistake. I, I believe this is God in his wisdom gave us the ability to be, to play different roles all at once. I mean, he does mm-hmm. it himself, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and then you'll find that even within those three, you will find that, okay, there's Jehovah Jireh, the provider. He made an interesting statement to um, each, to, um, to, Ab- to Moses. He said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they knew me as God, but they did not know me as Lord. As far as the children of Israel that's in Egypt, they're going to get to know me as Lord. That's very, mm-hmm. that's interesting. They knew you as God, but these guys are going to know you as Lord. So God began to show, okay, there's different parts to me. And so I led them this way, but now doing the children of Israel come from Egypt, I'm gonna be completely different with them. And you can see it, it showed when they when they came out that, that you saw God was you saw a whole nother side to him. I mean he it was always there, but he had to deal with them this particular way because of who they were, what they were coming into, and he had to, you know, so so I believe is in order to balance it, you have to know where you have to understand the lines. Yeah, they're, they're, they're line. You got to be careful not to cross the lines. You know, I'm not gonna talk to my wife like I'm talking to a member. It just she would feel devalued. She understand, hey, yeah. I, I'm your wife. I, I'm ex- it expect that you treat me a certain way. So yeah, in order to balance it and to balance it out from from my experience, I've learned that you under, you gotta understand where the lines are drawn, and you gotta respect the lines. But at the same time, just make sure you don't uh, have the positions cross over. Okay. You don't. Yeah, you know, I've, I've heard many. Uh, I've heard. Uh, I've heard stories of uh, PK kids who their their father may have treated them. They he didn't really give them the attention and care. He gave more the attention and care to the members versus the family. And yeah. no, you, you did it the wrong way. The the members get your care, but your you know your children, your family gets the the highest priority. You see that? Right. So that's balancing out, uh, staying within the lines and, and keeping the positions where they should be, where they need to be. That's good. Ooh, that that that's wisdom. 
That is thank you, thank you. wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And this is the reason why um, I wanted you on this on this episode with this particular topic because you have shared some gems for husbands, for fathers, for those who are just leaders in their community, their leaders in their workplace, mm-hmm. how to be an effective leader because that is something that is important because we never know who's watching, who's following, yeah. and who's going to look at you as an example. Yeah, that's so true. That is so, so true. That, that, that is, uh, I mean, it, it's funny, talking to you now, I can see why this topic really needs to be explored and talked about, because there's so much to it. I mean, it's exhaustive. And But uh, is that last statement you made, you never know who's watching. Yeah. You never know who, and the reality is that no matter what leadership your position you're in, somebody is going to be affected by the decisions you make and j- just the way it is. And those decisions and those things that they see can have lasting long-term effects for good or for bad. So because we know we're that effective, we have to even, we have to grow in our leadership skills and we really have to really push to be the examples that God has called us to be. Isn't it interesting? Uh, you, you remember it? First Timothy chapter three, he said that the bishop, whoever desires to be a bishop, this is how they should live. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, the Bible never says in the New Testament, you only really find God saying the body of Christ should marry one wife. You will find God saying um, uh, you, you find that God is speaking directly to how the bishop should behave. Well, why would God do that? Because he understood that the bishops, the pastors, would affect the people that are following him or her. That's true. It would affect That's true. the churches. And then the churches are going to follow the example of the bishop. And then from there, they're going to go out into the world and be lights to the world. You, you know, so uh, you don't really find, if you look at it very carefully, you don't really, you, you, you don't really find, I mean, you, you, there's some mentions of it, but when it comes to, because in the old covenant, they had many wives, but in the new covenant, all that changed. Yeah. Where you'll find that God given his command or Paul was saying, this is how the bishops are to behave because he understood that this is what, this is how you're going to, you're going to affect the people that's following you. So even God, God, I mean, the Lord knew the importance of setting the example because they're going to follow you. They're going to do what you do. And this is how you're going to have the effect that you're looking for. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That, that's good. That's true. That is very yeah. true. Uh, Pastor Patrick, I thank you. I can't thank you enough again for joining on this episode, being a guest on this episode. This has been really an eye opener. Um, mm-hmm. I've you, learned from you. this from this episode. I even having conversations with you, um, and we, we talk on the regular, but it, it's it, you're still able. I'm still able to learn. Thank you, and I just thank, thank you, you for being such a great, great example. Um, where can people who who wants to, because Pastor Patrick, he, if you want more wisdom, if, mm-hmm. um, I'll give I'll, I'll have him give his um, IG information out if if he wants to. But he drops a lot of great inspirational wise godly wisdom biblical wisdom that can help you apply in your life and so i would definitely strongly encourage those to follow pastor patrick on instagram and i think also on TikTok. i think you're on tiktok too right yeah yeah, but all social media platforms um to follow him because if you want some inspiration you want more wisdom he is the man to follow where can they follow you at pastor patrick Thank you, man. If, uh, to follow me, I'm, I'm on uh, Instagram as Patrick Demo. Patrick, of course, you know how to spell that Demo, D I M O H. Or on um, Facebook, it's Patrick Keller. <laughs> the, the, I, I mean, sometime we'll go into my last name while I have it that way. And then for TikTok, just to be clear, I, oh, yeah, Patrick Demo also on, on TikTok. So uh, I listen, I follow back. So if you want to follow, I definitely follow back, show some love, show some support. But um, yeah, thank you um for that shout out, Jeff. I appreciate that. No, you're welcome. And, and what I'll do is too, I'll actually add the information, Instagram information, TikTok information, like in the description below as well. So it will make it easier for those who wants to check in. Fox. I know sometimes people are listening; they might be driving or whatever, not paying too much attention. And it's like, oh, yeah. what is it again? So you don't have to like rewind back. Like, oh, what did he say? What is it? 
I'll put yeah. it in the description to make it a little bit more easier. Uh, before I let you go, Pastor Patrick, is there anything else that you want to add on to this conversation? Um, I would just say, listen, t- t- take the lead. Whoever you are, whoever you're listening, whatever you're you're doubting, uh, I mean, I mean, if you're doubting yourself, take the lead. I also would encourage people to uh, take the challenge. Uh, uh, you will find that God will give us opportunities, and sometimes these opportunities come in form of challenges. And I would yeah. say, take the challenge. Be willing to be stretched. Be willing to uh, go through things that's going to cause you to grow. I would tell people, uh, just, 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 yeah, just take the lead. Don't be afraid. You know, you only got one life. It's not the time to hold back. Move forward, and and, and be the best that God has called you to be. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah, well, thank, thank you again, you, Pastor you, Patrick. I truly appreciate it. Guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow this channel if you want more, more words of wisdom. And until the next episode, take care. One love. Take care.